Hi, I'm Austin Miller, and in this four-part video series, you and I are going to be talking to Justin Schwartz, a field service representative here at Silvis Technologies, about his experiences during Hurricane Helene in Stanhatchee, Florida. He's going to offer us some keen insights as well as his experiences on what first responders can be doing to prepare for some of the worst disasters that can hit in today's day and age. So let's hop into it. Paint a picture for me. What did it look like when you showed up there, uh, you know, day one? There's beauty and chaos, right? Nothing ever goes according to plan for for emergency situations. So we were redirected a couple times, but we landed at the Steenhatchee Community Center there in kind of the big bend of Florida. Basically, we were assigned there to help out with the, the women in that community who were trying to get everything organized. So nothing was quite there yet. Um, and Steenhatchee is a little community that doesn't have centralized government. Uh, they are part of Taylor County, uh, but they are not incorporated. So uh, there were a few women who really stepped up and decided to organize and get things going for them. Uh, and they did an incredible job throughout the week. But obviously the first few days, uh, there was a lot of uh, trying to figure out where things need to go, what needed to be done. And so for us, we were just trying to get bits and pieces of, of where we could assist, right? First looks, the area was decimated. Uh, I mean, there were there were two areas really within Taylor County that were hit the hardest. And uh, one was Keaton Beach, uh, which was just north of us in Steenhatchee. I would, I would say that was close to a 90% loss um, of that community there. And then Steenhatchee, you were looking closer to a 50 to 60% loss um, there. So it was, it was decimated, uh, debris everywhere, uh, no power, uh, very, very limited internet, if any, um, in certain locations. Um, yeah, it was, it was rough. Yeah. So, so it sounds to me like this area was already somewhat accustomed to a, a little bit of a suspension of the traditional infrastructure we're used to in most of modern life. What, what made you guys decide to choose that location for, uh, your, your base of operations? Sure. So um, when pre-planning, uh, when Helene was coming in, uh, one of our sales directors had been reached out to uh, by AWS, who's a good partner of ours. Um, they have a disaster response team and they have Silvus radios on hand. And so they had reached out to us to see if we could assist. And then I had also been talking with an agency in Florida who has Silvus radios uh, at their home agency as well. And we were planning on assisting them in their um, response efforts, driving up to Steenhatchee and our Taylor County in general and, and setting up and doing some relief assistance with them as well, some mutual aid. So uh, when when we were trying to decide where to go, our initial target was just the, the Taylor County EOC, which is in Perry, Florida. Um, but as we were approaching closer and closer, uh, we got a call from AWS and they had heard that Steenhatchee in particular really needed some humanitarian assistance uh, and they weren't going to be getting a lot of the infrastructure that other parts of Taylor County was getting. Through our friends at AWS, we were able to get a good heading and made that as our start point. You're painting a really good picture for me. I'm, I'm kind of getting the impression that it's almost like a Venn diagram of three circles, right? You you have this community that already has, you know, a, a capabilities gap in terms of their conventional infrastructure. Sure. You have a massive humanitarian need. And then also you have kind of an intersecting point between multiple agencies that are trying to coordinate relief efforts for uh, for the, the region that they're working within. Am I, am I understanding this correctly? Yeah, definitely. And, and all three of those things chose, uh, show different, uh, uh, different challenges. I want to say thank you to Justin for talking with us today. And we really appreciate him sharing all that information with us. This is only one video in a four part video series going over what first responders can be doing to prepare for natural disasters. So if you're interested in those other videos, make sure to subscribe to us on YouTube and then head over to our channel. Also, if you want more information about Silvis Technologies, the link to our Instagram, LinkedIn, and our website are all going to be in the bio. So go check those out. Thank you guys so much and have a good day.